Hello. <laughs> Luke converted our van into a tiny home on wheels in about three months, and today we're going to show you around our solar setup. First, let's talk about our situation. We've been in our van for about seven months now, and everything still works. We're loaded with 400 watts of solar uh, in between two of our max air fans on the roof of our beautiful van here. We have four 100 watt solar panels and that's just because that's what we can fit on the top of our van and stay within our budget as well. It was also just an efficient amount of solar. A lot of people are going with 400 watts. Outside of our solar, we have a DC to DC charger or an onboard battery charger. And that basically uses our vehicle's alternator when we're in motion to charge our two house batteries within the van. Having these two ways of charging is super important. When we don't have sun and it's cloudy, if we need power, if we're in a pinch, we can just go for a drive and find somewhere new to park and we'll be charged up by the time we get there. The other option, which is loaded on almost every um, trailer or motorhome, is shore power. When you can just plug into an outlet and it charges your batteries. Yeah, we opted not to go for shore power just because we didn't think we'd be in one place for too long. We wanted to maintain the stealthiness of it all and not have like things coming out of the side of our van. Now before we get into you know the details of everything, I should have you know that I have zero electrical experience. I am a plumber by trade so I've worked alongside Sparkies but I am not one and I don't pretend to be one. Everything I learned was uh, sourced from uh, different forums online and the knowledge that I had. I have a lot of friends that are electricians and I asked them for you know what to do here and there but they didn't really have much to offer just because they don't work with that from their day to day and you know they're more residential home um, applications that they're working on and not off-grid solutions. So if you're considering doing this yourself, jump in two feet if you have the confidence to do so. There's a lot of resources that I use that I will share with you guys uh, and gals and maybe it'll get you on your way. So just to give you an idea of exactly how much power we're using in a general sense, we work from our van and that means we rely on our computers and cell phones for work. Additionally, we have a couple things that are constantly running within the van. Um, one of those things being our composting toilet. It has a little plug-in into the side that's a tiny little fan that's running to keep the conditions within the composting toilet doing their job, so continuing to compost within the solids compartment. The other thing that's running constantly is our fridge and freezer, which is uh, an, an electric fridge and freezer. And it's super efficient, actually. It's called an ice co dual zone. We find that it works really well for um, the amount of power that it uses. So we do have an electric water heater and that actually draws a lot of power. We knew that getting into it that it would be drawing a lot of power but we didn't realize I don't think how much. It's not really a big deal because we just unplug it when we're not using it and then plug it in when we want some hot water. Other things are our max air fans that also run um, when we turn them on and off which is coming in super handy in the summertime here in Saskatchewan. It's quite warm and just for keeping the humidity down it's really important to have that airflow in a van in such a small space. The other thing is our propane furnace. It runs on propane obviously but in the winter months we have that going overnight when it gets pretty cold and that has a fan attached to it that draws quite a bit of power as well but in the summer months we really haven't been using it much. Now we're going to talk about the components of the system. Hello. Hello. Hello and welcome to my beautiful mess. That's labeled. I labeled things. Here we have the solar charge controller. 
This is our midnight uh, solar breaker. It's a circuit breaker that's specific for solar. Our two lithium batteries here connected in parallel. These are, that's our negative bus bar, our positive bus bar. This is a shut off for all power from our battery bank. This is our fuse box panel. These are a couple um, circuit breakers. And this big thing here is our inverter, which gives us our wall outlets. Over here, way up top, with this little green light on, is the Bluetooth module for the solar charge controller so I can keep track of the power coming in and uh, on uh, my phone. So this is our positive bus bar here, big chonky bus bar. And basically all our positive wires connect to that. And then over here is our negative bus bar. And that's where all our negative uh, wires connect to. The next thing in line connected from the solar panels is the solar charge controller. And basically that uh, keeps the batteries from overcharging by regulating voltage and current incoming from the solar panels to the battery bank, the two lithium batteries. And this guy here is was recommended by um, one of my pals on my on the solar forum um, just to protect uh, all our components it's a it's a solar specific circuit breaker um, rated for 150 VDC so you solar people will know what that means <laughs> so that basically just is an extra protection and precautionary um, thing for our components including our solar charge control so basically from the solar charge controller um, it powers our battery bank these two lithium batteries here from the battery bank we have wires to our fuse box here which powers everything involving direct current um, so basically everything but our wall outlets also from the battery bank we have wires going to our inverter which supplies us with our wall outlets and all these circuit breakers in between just protect wires, basically, from overheating in case there's a surge in power. So basically all these wires here, these positive wires here, are power going to specific appliances. For instance, this, this wire here I've labeled as a toilet fan. This here is the fridge plug. Yeah, lots of stuff. We still have room for a couple more but basically everything's taken up on this on this fuse box. This here is an on and off switch. On, off. So basically it shuts off all direct current to the entire system. So it shuts everything off except for anything powering our batteries. You'd want to have a shut off just so that you can, if anything goes wrong or you want to service something, you can just shut this off and there's no power. So we went with two uh, Renogy lithium 100 amp hour batteries. So we have a 200 amp hour battery bank. And uh, yeah, it's, it's sufficient for everything we need. I think if I was to redo it, I'd maybe put one more just to uh, have a long more power. But um, they work great. They're super efficient. They, you know, they have a lot of longevity and lithium batteries at this time um, are pretty much the best you can buy. And organization is just huge with your wires and having labels and everything just, just in case you have to service something. You don't want to have to tear a wall down to try and find where a specific wire is going um, just in the off chance that it may be the wire that you're looking for. So I think one of the great challenges of this whole thing was running wire and keeping it all hidden. I think the biggest challenge of doing this entire thing for me was just safety, making sure that everything was safe and protected and I had the, you know, the right um, amped uh, circuit breakers in specific areas as protection just in case something trips or fails. I think um, 
after not knowing anything about this stuff, the first time I had light was like Thomas Edison, like first time he had light, I'm sure I was like, I couldn't believe it. I mean, me having a background in plumbing and being, uh, having a mechanical mind, I think is really beneficial and just being confident enough to take something on like this and learn something new that is quite hazardous and could um, could uh, be a little dangerous so um, yeah you just gotta do your research and play every move that you make just do it with caution and, and be very safe I divided the uh, electrical from our water system for obvious reasons because <laughs> If, the, if we ever had a leak or anything, uh, it would not be good for the electrical system. That's why all the electrical is actually off the ground. And I built this uh, box here um, for the batteries, which is lifted probably about four inches off the ground, just in case there was ever, ever a leak in our water system, which there shouldn't be because I'm a plumber. So this is our... 2.5 gallon Bosch water heater that we installed and yeah so it, it holds enough for two hot showers when we want to use it we just plug it in and then it'll start to heat whatever water is in it it usually takes 13% of our total battery bank before it's completely hot and probably about 10 to 15 minutes once it's completely hot we just unplug it and then there's a bunch of hot water in here and we can just use that for our showers and once the hot water's out the shower's done <laughs> so from our inverter that big green and black thing down there which supplies us with AC power our wall outlets we have an on and off switch for that so when we're not using our AC power we're not plugging in our computers we just flick it off so this is one of our wall outlets so this is our Nikon battery charger so I'll turn on the uh, AC switch and show you what that works like. So you get a little beep and then the light comes on and we're charging our batteries, yay! This little guy here is a battery monitor. We have a, a shunt down below on our negative cable from the battery to the ground which some of you will understand. Jules is looking at me like, no. <laughs> but that's what, where the, from the shunt, a wire comes up to this battery monitor and it tells us exactly how much battery we have left. Right now it's blinking because we're charging. So it's basically telling us that we're getting solar power. Pretty cool. So this little guy here is the DC to DC battery charger, our onboard battery charger, which is so awesome. These two wires here run to the alternator and from the alternator power comes to here and then wires go to our battery bank and it charges our battery bank while we're moving. The vehicle, which is so great, I love this freaking thing. Um, and it's a 40 amp DC to DC charger for those of you wondering. This little wire here coming out of the charger goes to our ignition it's like an ignition switch so that when the vehicle is actually turned on then this turns on and when the vehicle's turned off it's off these two wires here from the inverter are the two wires going to our two outlets I guess our four outlets in two locations this little wire here which you're probably wondering about, oh, it's not like the prettiest thing in the world is um, our propane detector so I've got that wired into our fuse box and it's just make sure that we don't have a propane leak and it's it's always running as well actually so this little guy beside our outlet here is our blue seas uh, power dock I guess 12 volt power dock and it's got four USB connections along with a 12 volt socket connection and we just turn that on and off it's off now by clicking that and then these little green lights come on that one doesn't have one and then away you go
Cody. No, do I? No. I don't know diddly squat, a belt solar. I thought, like you said, this can charge our batteries. The solar item. Back there filming this way. Okay, I need you to sit a little less seductively. Are you okay that way? Yeah. Do you want to move the yoga mat so you're not no, tensing this is perfect. your neck? Oh, wait, fucking... Ow! Oh.